Welcome back. Shifting Streams is a new art exhibit bringing together a group of 12 artists of Cuban origins who live and work on the West Bank of the Hudson River, New Jersey. And you don't have to leave your home to see it. This exhibit is virtual at the Longwood Art Gallery's first ever 3D virtual space presented by Hostel Center for the Arts and Culture and Bronx Council on the Arts. Joining us now to share more is curator and art writer, Macon Barreto. Macon, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, thank you for having me here. Of course. Well, first we gave a little introduction, but um, you know, congrats on being the first art curator, cur curator to grace the Longwood Art Gallery's virtual space. Um, and can you tell us a little bit more about Shifting Streams? Sure, sure. So Shifting Streams, as you have already said at the beginning, uh, brings together the, the work of these 12 artists that works and live in New Jersey, basically in that area of Union City, West New York, which is uh, by, uh, on the side of the river. And it's a growing community of uh, artists of Cuban origins that have been settled there for a while. So in a way, this exhibition wants to highlight that community to show the work of some of the artists because there are a lot of other creative that lives there, but basically of these 12 artists in, from New Jersey. Thank you, Macon. And um, from what I've read, um, those artists don't have a lot of exposure there where they live um, to showcase their art. So you're opening the space virtually so more people can enjoy their work and view it as well, no? Yes. Well, actually, you know, it's um, kind of difficult to live in that area of New Jersey as you don't have the visibility that you might have if you live in Brooklyn or Queens or another areas in New York. So um, this is actually the second time that uh, an exhibition is uh, done with a group of artists from that area. The first one was in Miami some time ago. And the idea is to highlight, you know, that, that phenomenon. Um, the, the exhibition was originally planned to take place in the actual space of the gallery, but you know, due to the changes with the COVID-19 crisis and everything, we came up with the idea of doing a virtual show. Welcome to the Bronx to all those Cuban artists from Hudson, New Jersey. Um, Macon, I wanted to ask you, what are the types of mediums and the themes that artists explore in this exhibit? We read also that some of the pieces in the show were also created in quarantine during COVID-19. Can you share more? Yeah, yeah. Well, for this exhibition, um, I choose some recent works by the, these artists. And as you walk through the gallery, you realize that they have very different styles, very different topics from, uh, you know, the individual, the relationship, the social relationships, the intimate relationship between human beings. Some of them are exploring the space, the landscape, the technology even the dreams, the cultural spaces. There are many different um, subjects that they are exploring. I try to organize the exhibition in a way that it's easy to travel around and get, you know, a first section is dedicated more to individuals, to the human beings, to the self. And then there's a second moment uh, more associated to spaces, domestic settings, the space of nature, the space of uh, technological landscapes and so on. So that's basically like two segments I try to organize with the exhibition so it's easier to navigate there. But yes, uh, specifically the works of Danai Vigoa, one of the artists in the exhibition, was created during uh, the confinement due to COVID-19. Um, it's interesting because before this moment, she was also she was only creating artworks that were text-based. And this is the first moment in which she started to paint her own image. These are self-portraits. So in a way, this was a moment for her to explore her inner self, to explore her image. She had time to do that. And also to create a sort of um, statement around the idea of the culture of selfies today. She's doing a different kind of selfie where she's looking at herself through this slow process of a painting. And if you look at the artworks, you realize she's uh, also recreating a sort, of, a sort of multifold nature of herself with different faces and associated with social medias and so on. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing, Macon. Um, can you also share a few other pieces in the show and tell us a little bit about those artists and their work? Maybe one to three pieces if you can. Yeah, sure. Well, for example, um, I think it's interesting, well, all of them are very interesting, but in that same idea of self-portraits and portraits, we have the work of Alain Pino, 
which is creating these portraits of historical figures, American historical figures, but also figures associated today with economy because they are printed in the, in the bills, in the currency that we use every day. And, and he has created this sort of uh, self-interpretations, his own versions of these figures where in the, in the part of the mouth, in that area where the mouth and the neck would be, he had created this sort of uh, metallic structure that it's uh, the materialization of the wave of the sound of a word. So his, his, his way of, uh, a way of in, make an encryption, something that it's secret a word, a message that it's there, but we don't know what it is because it's encrypted in that structure. And then uh, we have the work of uh, Javier Caso, photography. And it's quite interesting because in this case, he explored domestic spaces. He used to work uh, on maintenance on some houses and he took this picture without the permission of the owner. So he's trying to question the idea of private property uh, and nowadays when we have so, so, you know, so many technologies that are all the time trying to get into our private spaces. And then, for example, we have the work of Kenny Arguinal, which is a different type of exploration. It's uh, more dedicated to the space of the self, but in this case of the dreams. She has been working for years um, with her own dreams, creating calendars, graphics, statistics, journals, everything, exploring her own dreams in order to know herself better. And in this case, you have this like abstract um, structure where you find a lot of numbers and those are the collection of the dates uh, of those days where when she doesn't remember what she has dreamed. So as you see, it's a wider range of topics and styles in this exhibition. All beautiful pieces that we just showed to the viewer as well. You can ver view them virtually, of course. Um, Megan, can you walk us through the experience, the virtual experience? Can people still read about the artist online and, you know, click and engage with the art? Please tell us more about the virtual exhibit. Well, let me start by the beginning. You just have to um, go to the website of the Hostel Center for the Arts and click on the exhibit uh, page. There you will find the title of the exhibition. And when you click there, you have the virtual experience in front of you. You can uh, put it like full screen. And then you, you are at the, at the entrance of the exhibition. There you can read a wall text about the show. And you can also see a video. There's a small icon on the side of the text where you can see the videos with the opening remarks. If you turn around, you see the list of artists on the other wall and in the area of the reception, you have a small video that actually uh, have some instructions on how to navigate the space. But it's very intuitive, really. I am very grateful to the team of Art Visualism who create this experience with me. And and they made it in a very easy way. So you just have to walk through those circles that are on the space, on the floor, and you can approach the artworks, zoom in or out. And there's a small icon on the side of every artwork where you can read the label, you can read the caption with all the information of the artwork. Okay. Thank you, Megan. So all you have to do is bring your own bottle of wine and sit down at your computer. Yay watch the art virtually with no problem. Were there any challenges behind curating an art exhibit virtually or have you done it before? How has this been different for you? Yeah, this has been completely new for me. You know, we were planning to do this in the actual side of the gallery, as I said before. So uh, in, in the summer, we realized this, this, is, this, was, this was not possible. So I came up with that idea of creating a sort of virtual experience that I have seen in other um, spaces for art fairs and so on and and the gallery the director of the gallery agreed with the idea so i started working with this team and it was a, a little bit different of course we didn't have to hang the works there we didn't have to print things uh, or be in the space to get a better sense of it and change things at the last moment or anything like that so but it was, it's a very interesting experience. And I think this is here to stay, you know, even if we get back to some sort of normality, 
um, the, there are things that you can get here with these kind of exhibitions that, for example, can reach people in every country in the world, can come and see the show, things that were not possible before, and I'm very happy with the results. That is so true. And I was definitely um, curious about that. I thought that the art was actually hanged at the Longwood Art Gallery, and then you took photos of it, but it's all literally virtually done. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Make we it. couldn't get there. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you still have, you know, as an art curator, I know that you still take care of those pieces um, in your inbox, in your email, um, as opposed to physically, you know, holding on to them. Is that different for you too? Yeah, uh, um, fortunately, I'm very familiar with these artists and I have visited some, uh, you know, all of them and I, I have seen the works in person. But of course, it's been challenging to, to work with these pieces only with the images and especially challenging for the people who's actually approaching this type of experience because, you know, that direct contact with the artwork, it's something... Um, that you cannot get from from this type of, of experience but anyway I think it's it's been a very good way to bring the art to the people absolutely making before we go what do you hope that people can take away from viewing shifting streams well I I hope that the people can connect with some of the artworks there uh, depending on their history on their experiences of life on their um, opinions of, of things I hope they can you know connect and have this inner conversation with with some of the artworks in the exhibit and get that those messages with them because there are a lot of interesting explorations here uh, in terms of concepts in the artworks uh, but also you know that idea of shifting, shifting streams this is a community of thriving artists immigrant artists that at some point had to change their lives and circumstances and emigrate and now we're in this moment also so of shifting our dynamics of changing our lives, not geographically, but you know, the dynamics of, of our society due to this situation. So in a way, this is a message of also of optimism uh, in that sense. Amazing. Thank you so much, Megan Barreto. She is the art curator for Shifting Streams. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks to you. Folks, again, you can visit Shifting Streams. It'll be on display online from October 7th to December 9th. You can check it out by visiting the Longwood Art Gallery virtually on hostos.cuny.edu slash culture arts and click exhibits. That's all for our show today. Thank you for tuning in to BXRX. I'm your host, Sanji Lopez, wishing you and your family safety and wellness now and always.